Hello again, human beings from the planet Earth. We're at the Saco River Bridge at the Conway location, uh, built in 1890, about to go over this. Um, you guys might remember back on a video that I did just below the bridge. Uh, to the right here, this is the uh, conversion of the Saco and Swift Rivers. And about a half a mile up the Swift River side of things is where the Pequocket Pond comes in. Um, and this is something I've been wanting to address because you got to think globally, but you got to act locally. And I think there's more to the story on this uh, Pequocket Pond deal. So before you get this video, I'm going to create some links uh, for you of information and a Google map. I'll be back with you here momentarily at a few key points, and uh, I'm going to paint a little picture for you of what's going on. Well, back with you, human beings. Uh, first stop is about a half mile south of where you just saw me at the covered bridge at the Pequocket Pond Dam. And if you can see there, uh, owned and operated by New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, Concord, New Hampshire. Well, you know as well as I do, that's just uh, another word for federal government. Um, but anyway, I remember from the age of eight years old, they're probably about 16 or so fishing here and you couldn't be here for more than 20 minutes or you would have a severe headache but the fun of coming here was that there were extremely large uh, shiner type fish here that you could just catch real quick and have a fight on your hands but anyway about a half a mile down this um, exit of the pond is where the Swift River is and I'm going to bring you there next to show you the difference in the color of the water now that's not conclusive proof obviously because this is a pond and the water would naturally be darker and you can't smell anything on this video but I can uh, it doesn't seem like a lot has changed here anyway be back with you momentarily uh, where this exit from the pond meets the Swift River Hey, back with you, everybody. Uh, just on the way, uh, about another quarter mile south of where I just was at the dam, I'm at the middle school, uh, Kennett Middle School, and over there is the elementary school. And just through those woods, uh, along the property of the school in the playing field, uh, is the exit from Pequocket Pond that I was talking about. So if things are as toxic as I believe they are, we have to assume that the kids have been playing in grass that's soaking up toxic water. But I'll be back with you momentarily to show you where this meets the river. Okay, back with you everybody. Just about a quarter of a mile or less actually, um, south of the dam for Pequocket Pond. You're looking at the Kennett Middle School, which used to be the Kennett High School, which was junior high and high school. That's where I went to school. And right over here is the elementary school. This is uh, the ball field, football, baseball, uh, soccer, all that. For, for many, many years, children playing here. Uh, right next to the, pond, uh, the stream, rather, that comes out of the Pequocket Pond. And this, to me, is a big deal because I know that pond is toxic. I don't know how toxic now. Um, but obviously, the sign says it all. It's toxic. And so these plants, this grass, has been uh, presumably absorbing this toxic water supply for generations. And, and I wonder how toxic and, and what are the health effects of that. Uh, I'm going to stop the video here for a minute and bring you down just a little ways I have to walk uh, to where that stream meets the Swift River. And I, wanna, I want you to see the difference in the color of the water. Um, so, anyway, I'll be back with you momentarily. 
Okay, folks, just quickly, I'm in about at the middle point of the field, and I just wanted to show you uh, this access point to this stream, which I'm telling you is toxic, and how close it is to where students are playing. Now, benches right here, <laughs> we would have to assume that probably young boys, if they needed to pee, they'd be venturing out even closer here, and we're only about, uh, oh, I don't know, <laughs> 20 feet. <laughs> 25 feet possibly from the stream. This is uh, the stream that comes out of Pequocket Pond um, and you can see how close to the school it is. So uh, this is a big deal to me and uh, I should have probably done something about it a long time ago. Anyway, I'll be back with you momentarily. All right, everybody, I made it through uh, the little bit of uh, woods, you might say, between the field at the school and the river, the Swift River, this is the uh, train trussle, which back in the day used to be great to jump off. You'd die now if you tried. Water's very shallow. But this has always been such a beautiful place. And in the early part of summer, when the water is still high, it was great tubing as compared to the Swift, which is very slow moving. But uh, right here, <laughs> and you may be able to already see that black ominous flow of water coming in to the river. You can definitely see uh, a color change instantly. And this is disgusting even now to me. Um, and again, I do know the pond water content, you know, the coloring is gonna be a lot darker. But I still, common sense tells me that everything is not fine. It cannot be fine. Uh, and by the time I'm done with this little bit of a video, I think most of you will say it's not fine either. Um, and you can already tell, the water here is much colder, perfectly clean. It's wonderful. And in the pond, there is actually a smell here. A um, lot of green growing, you know, life growing on the bottom of the pond. And you may think that that's nice, uh, but that's not always nice either. Now obviously this water is moving a little slower, but always moving pretty quickly. Uh, water temperature is a lot higher. And man, it stinks here. I, I'm getting a headache already. And I know you can't tell that from the video, but if any of you are locals to Conway, you can get down here very easily. You know how to do it probably already. Come down here and stand here for three to five minutes and tell me that you don't have a headache. And then please, try to tell me that everything is fine. I remember catching rainbow fish just around the corner. And from this point, folks, we're only maybe uh, a half a mile to the public swimming area, which is at that covered bridge I showed you, Davis Park uh, Recreational Area. A lot of people swim there. Uh, they're swimming in this. And so anyway, I'm gonna show you some more stuff. I'm gonna get off the video now. I'll be back with you momentarily. Hey everybody, just a quick shot at my leg so that everybody knows Kevin intended to go to work today, but there was a stall at work. So instead of working uh, to fund the system, I'm out there working for you. Much love. Be back in a Back with you everybody. Uh, maybe a quarter of a mile again away from the school on Hobbs Street, actually. We're at the Kearsarge Superfund Site Groundwater remediation facility, U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, management by Weston. So we sell out everything to the corporations too after we allow them to make a mess. Oh, and lo and behold, the property is for sale. This is the site of the old Kearsarge Metallurgical uh, Company, which did use uh, to some degree, and again, I, I, I knew this stuff was going on, I didn't get active, so I'm guilty, folks. Uh, but I know they had radioactive supplies. And you can see part of the building has been torn down. But this building, I remember when I was a teenager, coming into this building, which, yes, was illegal at the time, but I think Statue of Limitations has run out, I hope. Anyway, I don't actually give a fuck. Um, but anyway, walking inside that building, you get a real eerie feeling, and you still do even now. And anyway, just through the woods over here is Pequocket Pond. 
Um, now, one thing I forgot to mention back on the first video, or second video uh, clip, when I was standing at the dam, if you were to go behind me uh, into the pond and veer to the left, you would be going to another section of the pond which is fed by um, what I know to be a clean spring. But in, to the right, you would end up in about three quarters of a mile, uh, you would end up here. Uh, right behind the Kearsarge Metallurgical. It's not far through the woods, but because of what's here, folks, I'm not going down to the pond. I will locate it on the map. You can see for yourself, and uh, I'm not going to go down there. Um, but there's more to this story and the whole idea of that pond polluting basically two rivers, the tail end of the Swift River, and, well, the Saco River goes all the way to the ocean from here, folks. By boat, it's day's journey. So, uh, but I want to add one more thing. Um, Several years ago when I lived in Maine, there was a big deal about MTBE from the fuels ending up in the groundwater in people's wells. I'm going to take you next to Coleman uh, Gravel Pit where I don't know how many millions of dollars worth of gravel are sold every year and so we have all these machines that we know um, just because of their nature leak fuels and oils all into the ground. Alongside of the Coleman property is another brook that leads into this pond uh, and the flow of the current is from this location to the dam that I just showed you. So obviously not only whatever waste was here from the days of Kearsarge Metallurgical, but I think Coleman's has been in business uh, almost as long and they're still in business and we're going to take a short drive which is about uh, half three quarters of a mile from this location here and I'm going to show you uh, the immense amount of equipment that runs across uh, the land over there and the water supply that leads into this so double reason to think that um, we're being uh, you know, inundated with toxic shit. I don't know to what degree. I am going to try to do some research and include links below. Again, put a map with some of these key points on it so you can get the idea of what's going on. And I'm going to ask anybody that's a resident of New Hampshire to help me get active with this and get some straight answers. So anyway, I'll be back with you in a moment. All right, folks, well, the gate was down. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be here. Uh, there is an old faded no trespassing sign, but again, the gate was down, so I'm just making note of this. I'm on the back side of the building I just showed you, and I thought I might be able to get some more indications of what's going on, but this has been so long ago, I'm sure they've covered their ass real good. Uh, but I don't think this should be accessible to children, okay? Uh, at the very least, look at this, all open. Keep out. Yeah, that's going to work with a with a small child, a 12-year-old, or what, whatever age, even teenagers. It's not going to work with anybody who's out just hanging out, whether they're teenagers or not. I mean, I know homeless people that would probably crawl in here to get out of the rain, but are they being radiated? What other toxic shit did Kearsarge Metallurgical leave that is still lingering in the environment? Anyway, I don't know. Be back with you in a moment. All right, folks, we're coming up to the uh, Coleman Gravel place I told you about. It's at the intersection of uh, 113 and uh, Route 16, or White Mountain Highway. Uh, and I'm going to not get out here because I'm sure that they don't want anybody uh, having video cameras around here. But again, I, I really don't have uh, two fucks to give about what certain entities think. Um, okay, so tank, fuel trucks, big leaky greasy things, many just sitting here, uh, we don't know how often they get used. Now this is also public access because this leads to Ledge Pond, um, which I've taken the boys uh, fishing to and there's no way, I, I don't believe there's any way that these toxins could get into there. But right down here, <laughs> is a little waterway. Um, we actually cross it here in a moment. I'm hoping I can get a shot of it. But I'm going to take you through the pit anyway so you can just see kind of some of the activity. They are open for business right now. There's a shot of the waterway. Okay. Right there next to the road. And, the, and look. Grease. Running up the road. The, the oil. What is that? That's not water. 
That's not water. Oh no, no, no. Look at this. Look at this. Let, let's just see how far this goes. These two clowns sitting here burning fuel, just chatting. That's fine. We'll uh, we'll see how far this fuel goes. But they do a lot of business here: sand and gravel, concrete, rental business, bunch of trucks running around. Strange looks from one of the driver. Who's this guy with the flag upside down? And what's that video camera for? Old trucks rust, rusting away, leaking all over the place. Oh no, I'm sure there's nothing wrong here. Look how well they take care of everything. The roof on that shelter there looks like it's rotted right through. See a bunch of abandoned stuff and rotting, rusting relics. Oh yeah, I'm sure they keep everything spotless. Folks, it's an impossibility. I mean, let's be real. All this equipment, you, you can't keep all the grease out of the environment. There's no fucking way. You can't tell me that these water supplies don't need to be tested. And uh, another thing, the pond that I mentioned, Pequawket Pond, okay, this, this uh, waterway that you just saw does leach into that. And between that point, which I don't know if I can get to, um, let me take you through the rest of the pit quickly. See what else we see broken down or leaking. Um, so you can see that it, water does puddle here too when it rains because there's a lot of clay in the ground. So it puddles and runs. Okay, and it takes a lot of fuel, folks, to make all this gravel. Look at all that equipment out there, huh? Oh yeah, more rusty relics. Um, this is also the public sand supply. If you live in the area, you can come and fill buckets of sand for your walkways. So, you get a lot of public traffic out here as well. So, you know, I'm not really... Now you can see. See the water through there? Look at that. You're telling me that the, the fuels that don't leak here don't run down into that water supply? Huh? Really? Well, how come all that silt ran down into it? <laughs> and, and what's in the silt? What's in all that twisted metal abandoned there? Oh, and another thing. Oh yeah, and all this concrete that they grind up and dump back on the property that has been exposed to all kinds of fuels leaking from all kinds of other vehicles, wherever they took it up, parking lots, etc. Okay? This has to be an environmental hazard in itself, just this location. And I'm going to insist that somebody tell me it's not and, and show me the proof. You see, from I'm from around here, I'm awake, and I know how you elite bastards work. EPA takes control of that pond because it was toxic. Kearsarge goes out of business, and now nobody ever knows about Coleman's who makes millions of dollars a year, employs a lot of people, sure. Right, now this is another thing. This location over here is supposed to be just a stump dump for people to dump stumps, but for quite a long time, um, and maybe still, uh, places like Chick Packaging and others would dump scrap plywoods and other laminated woods in there. And as we know, that stuff's all toxic too as it breaks down. So, more looks, that's fine. Maybe he has the balls to question me so I can ask him some questions. Chances are they're gonna just keep an eye on things. Uh, love it if they called the police. You know, see, no dumping allowed. Well, how'd that pile get there? <laughs> Oh, yeah, you or I can't dump there, but if you got enough money and some toxic shit, I'm sure you'd be able to find a way in. And it doesn't seem to be much of a gate holding it closed. Just a sign again. That's how we protect caustic environments. We just put a sign up. Please don't drink the polluted water. Fuck. All right, I'll be back with you in a moment uh, because there's another factor here. There is another public beach. 
on Pequawket Pond, again about halfway between this location and uh, the Kearsarge site that I showed you. So I'll be back with you in a moment. Alright folks, on the way out I decided to stop here at Coleman's because I'm all about getting in your face and asking questions. Uh, but you got to be smooth about this stuff, so uh, come with me, will you? We're going to ask some questions. Um, I mean, being that Coleman's is the biggest employer around here, they should be happy to answer some questions. Hi. I hope you don't mind, I'm doing a documentary for YouTube, and being that you guys are one of the biggest employers in the area, I'd like to include you in that. I was just kind of viewing the site over here, and I had a couple... running now? Yes. You can't do that? Um, I was just wondering if you could ask me, uh, tell me if the EPA has contacted you about all the oil that I just saw leaking all over the road into the public water supply that leads into the, the Pequawket Pond. Can you please shut that off? Sure. Well, there you go, folks. That's that's what you get, huh? Well, that's all right. At least now they know to expect me. And just more parts to the Coleman uh, toxicity. This is their main office area, but obviously a lot of trucks coming in and out of here every day, too, from all over the place because uh, this is a supplier. All, all the big general contractors bring their trucks through there. So it's not just the immense amount of traffic that Coleman generates with their own vehicles. It is uh, from all over, uh, states away even, into Maine, um, I don't know, probably Vermont, other places. So we've got all kinds of trucks coming in and out. This is still part of uh, their property uh, over here, some more pits. Um, not used as much now, but you can see there is a bunch of, they're starting to cut back into the forest even more. I used to come out here all the time as a kid. Uh, I'm going to shut this off just for a quick minute. Actually, I'm going to keep it rolling because I think I can show you. Okay, um, this is looking down at the back side of the facility. And remember, that water supply is traveling in the same direction that I am right now. It's just halfway between here and the building I was just at. Uh, this is Cramor Shore Drive. So, now, if we were to take a left here on Bridge Street, I think I can show you, right down here is the beginning of the Pequawket Pond. And right in this general area is where uh, Coleman's fuel is, is must be here. It has to be. Uh, I'm not making blanket accusations of trying to harm anybody. This is not anybody that might. Right down there, you can see. This is the beginning of the pond. Um, didn't used to be able to get down here. This is usually washed out. But uh, we'll try to see what we can show you. Okay? So you can see um, Coleman's right there. <laughs> pond right there. Okay? You getting me now? All right? Um, Okay, now I'm going to shut this off, spin around. I want to show you the other public beach I mentioned earlier. All these homes, waterfront property overlooking a beautifully toxic pond. Back with you quickly, everybody. This is just another access point to Pequawket Pond, uh, just uh, between the Kearsarge site and Coleman's. And uh, I'm pointing this out because these are worms, and so people do fish here, okay? And chances are they eat the fish. Uh, luckily enough, they're not drinking the water. That's probably a good thing. Um, so anyway, right up in that area, as far as you can see, somewhere to the left of what you can see is where Coleman's will come in. And then, uh, as the crow flies here, kind of in that direction, is the uh, Kearsarge Metallurgical um, in the heaviest part of the trees over there. Not the buildings that you can see here, but just to the right of that. So anyway, I'll be back with you from the beach. Okay, folks, we're at the entrance to the beach, and I just thought it uh, kind of funny, you know, vacation rentals. <laughs> uh, so I guess evidently this place is down here that you can come on vacation and, and rent a spot next to the beautifully toxic water. Um, 
Gotta just go this way. I went in the wrong entrance. I just I saw that and I thought it was funny. Uh, we just the public beach is uh, right over here. Ran right over a stick, I guess. Loud bang. Um, so and I remember growing up, people wanted me to come up here and swim, and uh, no way because I knew about the Kearsarge thing. So they said, oh no, we we've. Everybody in the community is paid to clean the water and the beach and well, I didn't trust in that But uh, anyway, my question now would be Okay, so you cleaned up the mess that was there downstream from you, but what about upstream that's dumping daily? So let's go down and see what kind of shape the beach is in How are you? Fine, and you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing a bit of a documentary, just so you know, about the pond. Oh. Um, and the fact that it's toxic. You probably didn't know that. I'm sorry to horrify you, but uh, that's the truth. Okay, folks, so we're kind of midway between the Coleman site, where I just showed you the fuel leaking all over the ground into the water supply that does connect with this pond to my left, and then down to the right, the old Kearsarge Metallurgical. And I mean, the beach looks beautiful. Nobody would know, and nobody's talking about it. Um, so anyway, I'm going to ask your support. Remix this video, share it with everybody in New Hampshire, and put some calls into the EPA uh, and demand that they test these waters. Much love, many thanks, and I'll see you soon. Well, folks, you know, along with the truth, I gotta give you the sad part of this uh, job. The family here on vacation had to be here, you know, when I'm talking about this, and I'm glad they are, because there's kids there, two, two boys. And I just spoke with them off camera uh, about this. Uh, obviously, they had no idea of Kearsarge Metallurgical, um, you know, but when I explained the Coleman thing, the lady, lady was not happy and I didn't you know I just referred her to this video that I'll be putting up in my website and stuff like that these people have to know but they're gonna be sitting there I mean it's a dreary day anyway and now she's gonna to have to worry about what would the effects be on her grandchildren as they go play in the water um, we, we, we gotta stop this uh, anyway um, that's all I got for you now, folks. Uh, later today, I'm going to do some research, put some links below, uh, try to get a map with some dots on it so you can kind of see the pond and the Coleman's and all these other key points. And uh, anyway, I'm going to leave you on a sad note. Much love, many thanks, and I will see you soon. And uh, people out there that uh, do these kind of things, you damn well better expect me. Um, you, you you need to uh, expect me. So, until I see you, I'll see you.